oral anabolic steroids versus injectable anabolic steroids, understanding the risks. This focus of today is absolutely harm reduction education because there are so many men in the world, including women, of course, young people taking steroids. These are the two types of steroids, oral versus injectable. And it's old school, back to the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, where the history comes in with the chemistry. This is all about the chemistry here. Very specific detail, guys. Put the thinking caps on. And But I'm concerned about what's happening in one particular place in the world because with the anabolicdocapp.com and my consults, I'm all over the world now because of Zoom, because of telecommunications. India and Pakistan, you dear men, I'm very worried about you guys. Nowhere else in the world have I seen in the last five years or so more men doing steroids and doing more oral steroids because they're, you're scared of the injections, the fear of the injection, and it, you think it's safer, but it's absolutely not safer. No steroids are safe. None of the injectable steroids are safe, unless you're on TRT. I'm going to get into this. But I'm concerned for you guys because, because of the cultural barriers, I think, and some language barriers, some men in the world are using oral steroids much more than they should be used for the da and the dangers, associated dangers. Let me go into the technology. Okay, I've broken it down for you guys. Here we go. Oral steroids, injectable steroids on my chart. Mechanism of action, the history, from my opinion, the risks, and harm reduction strategies, what you can do to protect yourself. This is the holy grail, and from the grace of God, all the gods in the world, please, gentlemen, pay attention to this. Some of you guys may know it. Maybe you'll learn something. For you guys who know it all already, sit tight and give comments. Let's help these other brothers of the world that don't really know this stuff. Okay. 1930s, going back into organic chemistry, biology, making steroids came from testosterone derived. They soon realized that they could make a chemical change to the structure of this ring, these rings. The basic beginnings where they looked at the carbon 17 alpha alkylation and they altered it with ethyl and methyl groups. That's for all you chemists right there at that C17 alpha position. What that does to sundry steroids, many different types of steroids, very interesting, testosterone-based steroids, DHT-derived steroids, that's a whole nother animal. And, and you chemists, give comments on this if you can, but keep it short and sweet, and please always keep it positive. We don't need hate, just don't need the haters. It's not good for men out there. So what it does when you, when you make an anabolic steroid orally active as a pill, if you're watching this video, I'm sure you're concerned for your testosterone levels. In addition to testosterone, you want to check sexual membrane binding globulin, estradiol, free androgen index, and potentially cortisol. That's what I want to talk about today's sponsor. Let's get checked. They're a worldwide leader in at-home test kits, so you can get a comprehensive look at your testosterone levels and other labs without even leaving your home. You can order a test kit that will be delivered to you in discrete packaging. Once your sample arrives in the laboratory, confidential results will be available from your secure online account within two to five business days. These results are reviewed by a clinician and a member of the Let's Get Checked nursing team may call you to review your results. 
Let's get Czech laboratories or CLIA approved and CAP accredited, which are the highest ranking levels of accreditation for labs. So if you want to test your hormone levels without having to leave your home, visit trylgc.com. Orally active as a pill. It's basically making it so it's going to run through the liver with minimal inhibition where it's going to be the first pass effect is minimized so it keeps running through. Otherwise, it just the, if you just, just take straight testosterone without or steroids without this, this, this 17 alpha alkylation, the first pass effect, it gets just degraded right into the liver and it's just not going to circulate around into the muscle. See that? So that's what's happening. Th they realized that if they alter this chemically at that position, 17 alpha alkylation position with the methyl ethyl groups, that it's going to resist that breakdown. When that happens, it basically affects, it's a liver is the most toxic, uh, toxic toxicity right there. And we're going to go into that in detail here. There are other toxicities for sure, but that's the main feature. So that's the first piece. That's the oral versus an injectable steroid. Okay. So that's the mechanism of action versus injectable steroids. There are various structure changes chemically. These are mainly oil-based. There's some aqueous-based and I'm not an organic chemist guys. Okay, half-life is much longer, shorter half-life typically over here. But this is the basic, right? More, most steroids are oil, right? When you're injecting it, like decadarabolin, it's oil-based. and All the testosterone esters are oil-based. You see, this is amazing right here. So that's the structural difference from the chemistry and the mechanism of action. Next, the history. Why... Have they been used? How have they been used? Oral steroids work quick. They have effects quick. Guys start it back in the day, even today, to kickstart the cycle. This is the amazing history, guys. They're fast acting versus moderately to long acting. These are the real horsepowers over here in the end, I guess. I mean, as far as what guys stay on longer acting, but because you don't want to stay on these two. And I'm going to get into that. Harm reduction is coming, guys, in the end. So it's also the mechanism of the history for why they're used. Fast acting and powerful. Anadrol, D-ball. Going to get into it here. And fear of needles. You see that? Fear of needles. Easy and convenient. Convenient. So, and it's classic that the history is it's limited, guys, to four to six weeks, even less. Big power lifters, no names mentioned. These guys will run some anadrol, D ball. If they, if they don't have to worry about the weight class, right? Cutting weight too much because you're not going to cut weight when you're on anadrol and D ball. If you're on a lot of that easily, that's for sure. Very estrogenic, very puffy to get strong as hell, though. They do it for maybe a few weeks. Not two weeks or a week. That's the secret back in the day. Of course, Anivar's in there too. So that's the his historical perspective. And then over here, the injectable steroids historically, testosterone. It's not, a, it's, it's going to take time to kick in, but a couple of weeks. That's why they run the orals in the beginning and they kind of start it, wean them off, get them off. So here are the drugs. These are the drugs. Oral steroids first, Anadrol, Dianabol, Winstrol, Anavar. I'll talk about that in a minute. Halo test, Proviron, Primabolin is on both sides, both oral and injectable. And testosterone undecanate, which is very special. It is oral, but it runs through the lymphatics. It's not the 17 alpha alkylated deal. It's not a paddle Guys, pay attention to that. Testosterone undecanate and testosterone esters over here, which is propanate, sipinate, enanthate, sustenon 250 is all sorts of mixed of esters of testosterone. They're injectable long, moderate, short, medium, and very long acting. Like undecanate injection is very long acting. Here's undecanate right here, which is oral, runs through the lymphatic system, not the first pack, pass GI system that's classic. You see guys, 
This is really incredible history and chemistry that I'm bringing together for you guys. If you're interested in this stuff, amazing chemistry. So let's get right down here. Before we do that, testosterone esters. So these are the common orals. Here, testosterone esters. I told you, propanate, sipanate, and nanthate. There's equipoise, EQ, the prima bolin I talked about. It's both oral and injectable. DECA, old school, Tren, Nor19, DHT, Mastron, Winstrol, uh, and Winstrol. See, look, Winstrol, both oral Winstrol and injectable Winstrol V, right? Veterinarian stuff and Winstrol Depot deposition. Okay, going to the risks. So right off the bat, liver toxicity. It's number one. Let's talk about the four stages. I want to do a great bang out job for you guys here if you're really interested in this. Hepatotoxicities. There's four stages of how it can hurt the liver. The first one, when you're on, when you're on orals. A lot of differences of the orals too, guys. We'll talk about that in a minute. Anivar, not really so liver toxic, more uh, metabolized, almost completely metabolized by the kidney only oral anabolic steroid that's like this, right? Prima is also very special too, not very liver toxic. Okay, so the first part of the liver toxicity in stage one is going to be transient elevation, which is just a limited transient. So it starts the LFT transaminase, the liver AST and ALT on the, on the labs start to go up because the liver's because it's going through this liver over and over with that change, that 17 alpha alkylation, it's really knocking. It's just, it's just ripping through the liver and the liver is responding to it. It's break, it's, 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 it's an injury. It's a strain to the liver, but the liver is a monster, man. You don't take the liver down easy. I could tell you that, thank God. Alcohol, other drugs, toxicity, toxins and poisons and your liver is there to detoxify. So transiently, which means just as it goes on, it, it goes, you pull it off, they go down. We see this all the time. Liver enzymes and some of the pro bodybuilders and bodybuilders and guys do tons of Anadrol and D-ball, not to mention on top of tests and the drugs over here, they're all used together, right? For cycles, you look at the labs and liver enzymes, they look horrible. It's amazing that you come off the stuff, it cleans right up. It takes, a, takes time to hurt the liver, and that's from the grace of God. you got a lot of amazing, as you get older, you lose this, but you really have a lot of kind of built-in ability for the body to tolerate a lot of abuse. That's why all these young guys are on steroids, and they feel fine. It takes time to hurt the organs. You know, the Lord, the universe has given us a very strong body. That's spiritual stuff, guys. So please be careful. Next stage of the liver after the transient LFTs is acute cholestatic syndrome where the little LFTs and the bilirubin starts to go up. And that's when you start seeing alkphos and bilirubin on those, that liver enzymes in addition to the liver panel that you're seeing when you get that comprehensive metabolic panel on the labs, you order blood labs. They're labs. You can see how your liver, your kidneys functioning. This is all liver function stuff. So stage two is you start seeing the bilirubin go up. Next stage is chronic insult. It's chronic vascular injury to the hepatocyte. Piliosis hepatis. That's the scientific term. You start getting these, these kind of cysts can get blood. I've seen all this stuff. It's rare, guys. Man, that takes a lot. That's where you guys over there, you guys over abroad that I'm worried about, that there's a language and a cultural barrier. You're getting this stuff. Guys are drawn. I've seen it here too, guys, but it's rare. Most guys here know. They've known since the 1970s. I remember I did steroids back in the 80s, and we did a little bit of this, you know, Diana Ball stuff. We would not drink a beer. We'd be walking around the bar holding water because we were like, oh, we won't even want to have a beer. You know, you only want to have one drink because you're going to, that hurts the, the liver too, potentially. I'm telling you the history, guys. So the stage four is the tumor, hepatic tumors and adenomas and then full-blown hepatocellular carcinoma, guys. 
I don't even, I've never seen that. I've heard about it though. That's going to take, you got to be on the gas a long time. You got to be, I've seen stories of it and I've seen men where they've had to, they've lived on like Terenabol, you know, or, or Anadrol or D-Ball, maybe Winstrol for way too long, even a year, months at a time, maybe more than a year. And they've had to have surgery and part of the liver removed. Unbelievable. Okay. The risks over on the injectable side, it's less toxic. This is harm reduction, guys. I'm not giving a blessing. Go out there and start injecting testosterone and equipoise and, and DECA and everything. Tren is its own class of danger. That's an injectable drug. So, but it, they're less toxic because of, the, because of the chemical features I just went into. And, but it's drug by drug. It can hurt the liver. These drugs can hurt the liver. Yeah, I've seen it. And there's so much multifactorial, there's so much polypharmacy going on. you got so many drugs going on with so many men now. You don't know what's hurting what. It depends on your genetics and your other medical issues. So it's drug by drug, dose by dose, chronic use, and depending on your medical issues. And then we have to then run down to the, the risks. These are the risks. Also with the heart. It, orals are well known to destroy that lipid panel with the HDL and the LDL. Of course, we know that any steroid, even some Anovar, if you're running that long enough, will affect your sex drive and shut down, right? So this stands for both sides. You know, but I've seen guys just do orals, SARMs or, or Anovar, and then a year later, six months, they're, they're, they're partially shut down or completely shut down, which is rare, anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism. So that, that's the risks, but the, the liver is really up front, the heart, and getting shut down. And over, again, oh, you can get shut down over here, and the risk over here, this is what I want to show you right here. I got a lot written up here, guys. I'm busy. You know, guys, I'm busy. I love you guys, and I'm just, I do, I spend hours on putting this stuff together, and I got to rip through it for you guys, but I got to stay focused and get through it. So, it is true that the risk injections, you're injecting, men have been known to share needles and they can get HIV and hepatitis B and hepatitis C, not to mention other bloodborne pathogens that are more esoteric, I've seen, and just bad skin infections, guys. You know, abscesses, I have videos on that. So, Please don't share needles, gentlemen. Please never share. Don't boil and clean your needles. You know, just boil your needles and try to sterilize your own needles. We need more help in the world. We need more harm reduction. We see we're doing that with the opioids. Some people don't agree with it, but what are we going to do? Let's get some discussion on this, guys. This is understanding the risks and harm reduction for the guys abroad and for the guys here in America, too. But I'm seeing that disparity with the guys abroad are much worse. They're so needle phobic that they're just living on orals way too long. Harm reduction. Here we go, guys. Thank you for getting with it with me, staying with it with me. Harm reduction strategies. Limit the use of orals. Limit the use of this stuff too, guys. Just limit your use of steroids. Limit the use of orals, never more than four to six weeks, even less, two weeks or three weeks. Check your comprehensive metabolic panel, guys, for the liver function. Really understand this liver breakdown. Look at the transient increase in LFTs, come off. Clean out, come off. Everyone knows it, guys. And the risks over here, obviously, I talked about the toxicities of sharing needles and so on and so forth, and then just steroids themselves because trends not toxic. Of course, it's the DECA and it's going to shut you down. Equipoise, testosterone esters. You're, what, 750, 400, a gram a week of testosterone. That's not toxic, causing hypertension and problems with the cholesterol and the hypercoagulable states and the blood clots and the DVTs, pulmonary embolisms. The list goes on, guys. Please, gentlemen, if you want access to me and all my information up here in this brain and the years and years and of what I've worked for to share and to help you, gentlemen, anabolicdocapp.com, please never share needles. 
never, ever share needles. I really hope this helps, guys, and thank you for bearing with me on this one because there's a lot going on in my brain and my life, and I don't want to do multiple cuts of this and edits for my editing guy. Just rip right through it, guys. And I want to see comments. I want to see, do you guys really know this? Share this with every man, every person in the world that wants to know more about anabolic steroids. I really hope this helps you guys. Thank you so much.